Hello and welcome to the 35th video in this beginner's guide to Adobe After Effects. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a simple animated transition in After Effects. In the previous episode, we continued our animation intro sequence and added in the bouncing pins. In this video, we are going to continue on and add the next animation sequence. In this video, I'm going to show you how to animate a simple transition from frame 1 to frame 2. So in this video, we will be covering the following topics. Editing shapes with the pen tool, animating a graphic, and animating position. So let's get into it. So here I am where we left off in the previous episode where we animated a bouncing pin and duplicated the animation to complete the first part of the intro sequence. Now, if you're following along for the first time, I suggest going back to the previous episode where we set up this document and animated the initial sequences. Video links are in the description. Now, if you are continuing on from the last episode, make sure you have your document open and ready. With it open, let's proceed. So looking back at the Photoshop design, we can see that frame two in the introduction section uses the same type style and map background, but set on a red color. What I want to do here is transition from the first frame into the second. I want this chevron shape to slide in from the right, cover the first frame, then zoom away to reveal the next frame. So back in After Effects, to do this, I'm going to use a shape layer. So I'm going to make sure that my work area is still set to four seconds here. So I'll click on four seconds on the timeline and press N to set the end of the work area. And I'm going to zoom in and focus on just this area. Now I'll make sure I have no layer selected in the timeline panel. I can either click off the layer into the gray area in the composition panel, or I can press F2 on the keyboard to deselect. With no layer selected, I'll come up to the shape builder tool and click and hold and select a rectangle shape. With the tool active, I'll come and draw a small rectangle shape like so. Upon release, we will have a new shape layer in the timeline panel. So with the new shape layer, I'll come up to the top menu and I'll click on the fill color box and select a white. Then I'll click on the word stroke and up will pop a settings box. In here, I'll make sure to select no fill and click OK. So all I want here is a white box with no stroke. On my new shape layer, I'll come down and click on the colored square and select purple to change the layer to purple. And I'll press enter on the keyboard and name this layer to white transition. Perfect. So now I need this white shape to cover the entire screen. Next, I'm going to press Command Alt F on Mac or Control Alt F on PC to fit the shape to the entire canvas area. Now, when you create a shape, it will span the entire length of the comp. So next, I'm going to trim the layer in the timeline panel. Though I need this to appear at a specific time. So I'll start by placing my time indicator at two seconds. With the layer selected, I'll press Alt Open Square Bracket on the keyboard and that will trim the first part of the layer. I'll move my time indicator over to about 3.5 seconds, and I'll press Alt Close Square Bracket on the keyboard, and that will trim the end of the layer. Perfect. So as I drag my time indicator over this new shape, we can see it only appears for a limited amount of time. So what I need to do next is edit this white shape so it's a chevron shape and not simply a box. So I'll select the white layer and press and hold shift and press the left arrow to move it so the left part of the box is in the center of the screen, like so. And what I'm going to do next is add a point to the left side. So I'll come down into the timeline panel and toggle down the settings for the shape. So I need to toggle down the settings until I can see the rectangle path, shape and fill option. With the rectangle path visible, I'll right click and select convert to bezier path. Doing this will allow me to edit the shape with the pen tool. So next, I'll come up and click and hold on the pen tool and select the add vertex point. And I'll come and carefully click halfway down on the edge of the shape. This will add a new vertex point to the shape. With the new vertex point added, I'll simply press the left arrow while holding shift on the keyboard to move the vertex point out. And this will put a point on the left side of my white shape. Perfect. So once I'm happy, I'll press V to activate the selection tool and I'll click the shape and start to drag it left. As I do that, I'll press and hold shift on the keyboard and slide the white shape layer across the canvas in line. And I'll do this until it's halfway across the frame. So again, I'll come up to the pen tool, click and hold and select the add vertex tool. Then come down 
and click on the middle edge of the right side of the shape to add a new vertex point. So this time we are going to select the top and bottom points. So I'll press V to activate the selection tool. I'll select the top right corner point, press and hold shift and select the bottom right corner. With the two points selected, I'll tap the right arrow button while holding shift to move the points out. And I'll push the points out until I have a nice point into the shape like so. Now I'll press V to activate the selection tool and I'll click on the shape to select it. Then I'll carefully drag the shape while holding shift to drag along a straight path and cover the frame like so. Once happy, I'll come down into the layer and toggle up the settings. So now I have my white shape layer, it's time to animate this. So what we want to do here is animate the shape in, hold for a second and then animate out to reveal the next frame. So let's start with the animate in. So with the layer selected, I'll press P to reveal the position settings for my layer. I'll drag the time indicator towards the beginning of the shape layer while holding shift and that will snap the time indicator to the start. So I'll come and hit the stopwatch on the position setting to add my first position keyframe. Next, I'll drag my time indicator along the timeline about half a second, between two and three seconds, and click the diamond icon to add a second keyframe. Next, I'll drag my time indicator towards the beginning of the shape layer while holding shift, and that will snap the time indicator to the start over my first keyframe. Okay, so with the time indicator over the first keyframe, I'll press and hold shift and press and hold the right arrow on the keyboard. This will now move my white shape over, and I'll do this until the white shape is just out of view. Now, if I scrub my time indicator over these two frames, we can see the shape animates in. Nice. So I'll click on the timeline at 1.5 seconds and press B to set the start of my work area. And I'll press spacebar to preview our new transition. Now on this occasion, I feel this is a little slow. So I'll move in on the timeline and I'll come and drag my second keyframe a little closer to my first. Here between frame five and 10. I'll press spacebar to preview and that is looking just about right. Okay, so that's the intro done. Now I need to animate it moving out of the frame. So I'll zoom out of the timeline a little so I can see the seconds on the timeline ruler. And I'll drag my time indicator across the timeline to about three seconds. I'll come down and click on the diamond shape to add a new keyframe for position. Next, I'll drag my time indicator over to match the same space between the first two keyframes. With my time indicator in place, I'll press and hold shift and press and hold the left arrow on the keyboard. This will now move my white shape over and I'll hold this until the white shape is just out of view. Upon doing this, we will add a new position keyframe on the layer. And I'll press spacebar to activate preview, and that is looking just fine. But maybe the pause in the middle is a little too long. So I'll press spacebar to stop, and I'll click and drag over my last two keyframes to select them. With them selected, I'll just drag them close to the second. So the two keyframes sit with the three seconds set in the middle. I'll press spacebar to activate preview, and I think that is looking much better. Perfect. So now I have the animation done. Next, I want to smooth it out a little with some easing. So I'll come and click on the first keyframe for position. I'll right click, scroll down to keyframe assistant, come across and select easy ease out. Next, I'll click on the second keyframe for position. I'll right click, scroll down to keyframe assistant, come across and select easy ease in. Next, I'll click on the third keyframe for position. I'll right click, Scroll down to keyframe assistant, come across and select easy ease out. And lastly, I'll click on the fourth keyframe for position. I'll right click, scroll down to keyframe assistant, come across and select easy ease in. So now I can see the keyframes have changed to these arrow shapes indicating we now have easing applied. So I'll press spacebar to activate preview and the transition is looking just a little more smooth. So I'll press spacebar to stop and I'm going to finish this effect off by adding motion blur. So over on the right on the timeline panel, I'll make sure that the motion blur icon is activated at the top of the panel. This should be set to blue and I'll come down and click the blur box for this layer. So with the blue box checked and the blue icon active, I'll press spacebar to activate preview again. And now as the white shape moves in, instead of the straight edge, it now has blur. Perfect. And I'll press spacebar to stop. So once I'm happy with the animation, we can see that there is some layer bar lagging over the end of the keyframe here. So now I'll trim this up by dragging my time indicator towards my last keyframe while holding shift. 
and that will snap to it. Then I'll press Alt, close square bracket, and that will trim the end of the layer. Easy. So now we have the transition effect in place, it's now time to add the elements for the second frame. Looking back in the Photoshop design, we can see that frame two uses the same type style and the map background, but set on a red color. So back in After Effects, I'm going to prepare for the next visual elements. So now we have the transition, we can use this as a gauge. So I'll place my time indicator right bang in the middle of the transition, so all I can see is white. Next, I'll come down into the timeline panel and I'll start by selecting the top pin layer. I'll hold shift and select the type layer. Now I'll make sure not to select the map layer and I'll press Alt close brackets on the keyboard. This will trim the layers to this point. Next, I'll select the bottom solid layer and again press Alt close bracket on the keyboard to trim this layer. So as I scrub across the timeline, what we see here is the white transition appear in and as it slides away, we only see the map. Nice. So let's bring in the first part of frame two. So I'll press F2 on the keyboard to make sure I have no layer selected. Then I'll press Command Y on Mac or Control Y on PC to create a new solid layer. So I'll quickly jump into Photoshop. With the eyedropper tool, I'll select the dark red color. I'll double click on the square color in the tool menu. I'll come to the hex value code and copy this. Then back into After Effects, I'll click on the colored box Paste in the hex code color, click OK, and then click OK to create the new solid layer. Upon click, we will now see a new solid layer appear on top of the layer stack. So what I want to do here is drag this layer down and under the map layer. So I'll click and drag the layer down and under the map layer, like so. And if I scroll across with the time indicator, we can now see the map is blending nicely with the red layer. But right now it's on top of the blue layer as well, so we will need to trim this quickly. So I'll drag my time indicator to the end of the trimmed layers at the middle of the white transition while holding shift to snap. And with the red solid layer selected, I'll press Alt open square brackets on the keyboard. And that will trim the start of the layer. So now we have the blue transitioning into red. Perfect. So all that's left to do is create the next animated type layer. Well, to do this is really easy. Now we have already animated one piece of type here. So what we can do is simply duplicate this. So I'll select the type layer and press Command D on Mac or Control D on PC to duplicate the layer. Now I want this second type animation to appear just as the white shape transitions away. So I'll drag my time indicator between the last two position keyframes of the white transition. Then I'll select the type layer and drag across while holding shift and it will snap the start of the layer to the time indicator. So if I scrub my time indicator over the sequence, it's appearing just how I want it at the right time. Perfect. So looking back at the Photoshop design, the type for this is to visit in dot dot dot. So back in After Effects, I'll double click on the type layer to select the type and I'll type in to visit in dot dot dot. I'll click off the layer to deselect. Now I'll drag my work area right back to the start of the timeline and I'll drag the end out to around five seconds. I'll press spacebar to activate preview and the transition is looking great. So I'll press spacebar to stop and I'll click on the London map layer and press U to see the keyframes. Right now, the second keyframe is at four seconds. So I'll quickly click this and drag this to five seconds. I'll press spacebar to activate preview and now the map expands nicely across the entire sequence as well. Perfect. So I'll now press command A to select all the layers and then press U to snap away all the keyframes so I can just see the layer bars and press F2 to deselect them. So that is the animation sequence sorted between frame one and two of the outro sequence. At this point, I would recommend saving your document so we can continue in the next episode. So now looking back at the Photoshop design, if we now come into the layers panel and toggle the visibility of frame two, we can now see the word London on a British flag. In the next video, we are going to animate the last frame of the introduction section, where I'll be showing you how to animate a British flag scene. So see you in the next video.